Hi everyone, um, this is just a bit of a game and once again I struggled to come up with the names when I was lying in bed last night and it just sort of, I don't know, came to me. Um, so a bit of a name for it, I'm just going, hmm, what do I call it? And that's what's going to be called. Cool. Hmm. So we're just sort of wondering uh, what has happened in this game. So first of all, what you need is my trusty dice, you could use uh, six sided, I, I tend to go for the ten sided because it gives the kids experience with using uh, all the numbers but as I always modify and suit uh, the ages and abilities of the kids. A couple of counters and my trusty chart. Some of you might be thinking oh but where do I get those? They're good fun just to make. You can also use a blank one so I'll show you and give you some ideas about how to use that as well. So to play. Hmm. Here's what happens. Play one and you could have a number of players uh, using the same chart too. So we roll three dice and what they have to do is do anything they can with just two of them. So I roll and I've got a six, a four and a two. I can do anything I like with any two of those numbers. I don't say what I'm doing yet. So for example, a six, a four and a two comes up. I say to my um, opponent, the answer is four. So that's when hmm comes in, my opponent's saying hmm. A six, a four, and a two. What have you done with those numbers to get an answer of two? And then they might say, okay, six take away four is two. And if so, yep, you got it. That player then puts one of their counters on the number two. Now, once again, linking to all the other games that I've put up here, you could use the rule, sorry, not. Like, and that means if somewhere down the track someone else gets an equation that the answer is two, they could bump you off and say, sorry, not. It's up to you, rules for schools. So, it goes to another player. They roll the three dice, get, they choose any of the two numbers and they make an equation and say the answer is seven. The other player or players can then say, well, I think you did this or I think you did that and got the answer of seven. And if so, they put their counter on. How do you keep them honest? If I'm the player rolling the dice, I might write my equation down on a bit of paper to prove that that's what I um, uh, had made. I don't sort of change it when people say what they think I came up with. Just a bit of an honesty factor there. And it's also good practice in writing out the equations because you might write the equation and find, oh, that's not quite right. Discuss why not. And it's not about being wrong or anything or competing. It's just another way of just developing our number facts. And you'll see, what we're doing here, this skill that we're trying to develop, it's probably covered in so many of my other games, but I found last year that some of my kids said we really like learning the same skills but in different ways. So that's why I'm putting forward a lot of these activities where we're still just developing number facts but in different ways because some kids don't always get it the one way. Um, now, as I said, they place their counters on there. You can use the hundreds chart. Another challenge could be just to do this and they find where their numbers should be on the chart. They don't have the extra support of the numbers being there. That's just another layer of the game. Uh, variations. Uh, for the older kids, what I like about this game is it can be modified in just so many ways to suit the ages and abilities of the kids. The young ones, preps, ones and twos, for example, they might just use addition and subtraction. The older kids might go six times four divided by two or 46, make it a two digit number, take away two. Really make a challenge. Um, you're probably thinking, what if they're taking too long to come up with an answer? I roll my dice, we might say, oh, I don't know, maximum minute. A minute's a pretty long time when you're playing these games. You decide uh, what the time limit is going to be. So the older kids, they could use all three dice instead of leaving one out use all three dice in the equation. Um, rather than competing against people, uh, you on your own or with a partner or as a small group, you could all decide, let's see how quickly we can cover as many numbers as possible in five minutes working as a team. Um, they could all be rolling their own dice at their own time or one set of dice, three people. Let's see if we can come up with different equations. And that way there's a lot of teamwork and working together and seeing how people come up with different solutions. You could use four dice, two digit, two digit, uh, 42, 64. You could add them, you could subtract them, 
whatever other versions you could do you could use a bingo chart people write down nine numbers or 16 numbers on a chart who could be the first to cover all their numbers or get a row of numbers uh, I said the sorry not the hundreds chart how many can you cover in five minutes how uh, long does it take to cover the whole chart? That'd be a real challenge. They might get sick of it by then. So I often find that by setting a time of five minutes, what can you do in that five minutes? Um, once again, do the same, but use the blank. Uh, you could play three in a row. You could select a, an array of numbers. I might select my numbers are all in this array here. How quickly or how many of those can I get in the time limit allowed? Um, or it could be just the first person to make an array of some sort. I might get these four numbers or I might get uh, these six numbers here. Um, there's just so many ways. We're using all the operations. So it's cool. Hmm. Roll the dice, leave one out, make an equation, see if others can say back to you what equation you have written down to get that answer. Here, I'll give you a quick demo of what it looks like. So, hmm. Hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Okay, here's a short demonstration of just how to play the basic version of hmm. So what I do here is the first of all, my trusty dice. I roll three and it's an idea I have a set of um, face washers in my classroom from a roll dice. But imagine 25 kids making all that noise all the time. Here we go. I've got a nine, a five, and another nine. And I tend to put, I can put them in random numbers. So if I put them like that, sometimes the kids think I'm going this one, this one, this one. I often just put them in random fashion. A nine and a five and a nine. I'm only going to use two of them. And I'm going to say my answer is four. So I'm not saying which dice I've left out either. So which one is four? So kids are thinking, well, oh, five plus nine, nine take away nine, nine plus nine. Um, they might exhaust all the addition examples. Then they might think, well, I'll do take away. Well, five take away nine, can't do that. What about nine take away five? Four, someone says, did you say nine take away five is four? I show them my bit of paper. Yep, so that player covers four. Next player's turn. Roll the dice, they've got an eight, we've got a one, and we've got a five. I'll leave one of the dice out, and I'm going to say to my partner, my answer is 13. Hmm, well, there's the biggest number, so if I do any takeaways, it's not gonna be 13, so we're strategizing. Eight take away one, no, eight take away five, five take away one, five plus one, um, they don't know which dice I've left out at the moment. Um, eight plus one is nine, eight plus, oh, is your equation eight plus five equals 13? Yes, it is, so they cover 13, and so on. For the older kids, you might go three dice, nine, three, and six. I was going, I'm gonna use all three of them this time. My answer is 57. Oh, so they're thinking of all the, so if I just add them, no, too small. If I, so they might have to multiply this, trying to work out, well, you've got 57, so there must be, you must have to multiply them in some way. Six times three plus nine, no. Nine times six is 54. 57, nine times six is 54, plus three makes 57. Is that what you've got? And they say, yep, so they cover. 57 and then likewise as I said earlier you could be the first to get get rid of your five counters or get get an array or first to get a row um, as a team how many numbers can you cover in five minutes and so on so you can be modified in so many ways um, I'd love to if you leave a comment see what ways you've changed it so that's how to play hmm hope you enjoy it cheers everyone